Greetings students and welcome to this short video on deriving the Stirling formula. The Stirling formula is an equation that allows you to calculate the natural logarithm of large factorials. It says that the natural log of n factorial or the ln of n factorial approximately equals n times ln n minus n, where capital N is a large number. Now there's multiple ways to derive Stirling's formula and I'm going to show you a method that involves less computation in this video. There are many other methods and I might show you them later. We'll start with the natural log of n factorial. We know that n factorial is just capital N times capital N minus 1 times capital N minus 2 and so on all the way till 1. Using the properties of natural logs we can split this up so we're adding a whole bunch of logs instead. Now, this split up expression can be converted to a summation, specifically the sum from k equals 1 to capital N of ln k. And I'm going to call this equation 1. Let's now move to Raymond sums. Suppose we're integrating the natural log of x from 1 to capital N. If we draw the function given by the natural log of x, here's what it will look like. Now the idea behind this integral is to find the area under ln x from 1 to capital N. Other than straight up integrating, one way we can do that is to use Raymond sums and the definition of integration. We break up the interval of integration into capital M segments, each of length delta x. Then we evaluate the natural log function over a single segment that I'll index with k, multiply the value of that function by the segment length delta x, and repeat that process for all the other segments, and then finally add the results. So you're essentially finding the areas of these mini rectangles and then adding those areas of the mini rectangles together to get the area under the curve from 1 to capital N. Now what ends up happening is that the area under the curve A can be approximated by this summation, which is the sum from k equals 1 to capital M of ln of x sub k times delta x. Now if the number of segments that you use, the capital M, starts to get larger and larger, your approximation for the area under the curve will get better and better. In fact, as the number of segments capital M approaches infinity, the area you calculate from this summation formula will approach the exact value of the area you get from integration. I'll call this equation 2. You can write delta x, the length of each segment, as the total length of the interval, which is capital N minus 1, divided by the total number of segments, which is capital M. In addition, you can write x sub k, the value of x in the kth segment, as the initial value of the interval, which is 1, plus the interval you're considering, which is k, times the length of the individual intervals, which is delta x. We can plug in our delta x into x sub k and get 1 plus k times n minus 1 over m. Let's plug all of this into equation 2, and this is what we'll end up with. But what happens if both capital M and capital N are both equally very large? Well, this capital N minus 1 over capital M term basically just becomes 1, and the capital M at the upper limit of the summation can be replaced by capital N since they're roughly the same. This means that your equation for the integral will look something like this approximately where the integral from 1 to capital N of ln x dx is approximately equal to the sum from k equals 1 to capital N of ln of 1 plus k. Now when k starts at 1, the sum of the natural logs of 1 plus k equals the sum of the natural logs of k because the natural log of 1 is just 0 anyway. Now this summation term on the right is actually equal to the natural log of capital N factorial according to equation 1, so what we can do is we can plug that in here. All that's left is to evaluate the left hand side. It's pretty easy to integrate ln x if you apply integration by parts. And if you do that, if you apply integration by parts and if you evaluate this integral of ln x, you'll end up with capital N times ln of capital N minus N. And this gives you Stirling's formula that the ln of capital N factorial is approximately equal to the capital N times the ln of capital N minus capital N for large enough capital N. Now keep in mind that the larger your capital N is, the better this approximation will get.
Anyway, that should do it for this video. I'd like to thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.